Welcome back, everyone, to the Museum of Flight. When we heard that there was a descendant of Chief Seattle living in Port Orchard, we wanted to talk to her. We wanted to find out if she knew stories about the chief that we hadn't heard yet, if she had any fond memories of the family. What we found was a woman who was ashamed of her past until something changed her mind. Mary Lou Slaughter is the great, 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 great granddaughter of Chief Seattle. As she digs for the cedar roots that she weaves into baskets, she connects with her own as well. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Everything that works worthwhile is work, don't you think? Mary Lou has struggled with her past for years. She remembers the day her second grade teacher announced to the kids that one of their classmates was related to Chief Seattle. You know, I thought, well, that's kind of neat. You know, they, they think that's special. And so, but then on the way home from school, the kids chased me and they did war whoops. You know, that um, thing. <laughs> and uh, called me nasty, dirty old Indian and all kinds of names. And I just would cringe inside. After that, Mary wanted nothing to do with her Duwamish Indian heritage. I come home from school and I told my mom, I said, I'm not Indian like you. I'm Swede like my dad. <laughs> and she said, well, you didn't get those big brown eyes from your Swedish father. After 50 years of avoiding her ancestry, Mary found something on an Alaskan beach that changed her mind, an eagle feather. And I reached down to pick it up, and I, when I picked it up, it was like I had this warm bolt of heat went up my arm. And it actually put tears in my eyes. I just was overwhelmed. <laughs> it chokes me up to, to talk about it. But, um, and it was like God telling me, Mary, it's okay that you're Indian. And it was a, like the first time in my life I really felt good about it. After that experience, Mary took an Indian name, the same one her great-grandmother had, Slada, which means lady. She also discovered a skill she shared with another ancestor. I understand myself better now because I know where my talents come from. And because uh, Princess Angeline was a basket weaver. Princess Angeline was Chief Seattle's daughter, Mary's great-great-great-grandmother. Mary has unraveled most of her family's history on her own. She doesn't have much to go on. There's only one known photograph of Chief Seattle. You know, I've done some research and found out that he was almost six feet tall, that he was a very large Indian. Um, he had curly hair, which is unusual. Weaving together her own story has been as difficult and time-consuming as making her baskets. I have people tell me I have lots of patience. This basket will take 200 hours to finish. But when you think about the lineage Mary's basket represents, 200 hours doesn't seem like much time. I would like to pass my knowledge and on to keep it going because I think our tribe is dying because of the uh, people not interested. And I wish I could do more. Mary Lou's hands link the past to the future and her baskets are full of hope. Maybe someday I can teach my grandchildren how to weave baskets. I would love that. Mary Lou is very attached to uh, everything that she makes, but occasionally she will sell a piece or two. If you'd like to get in touch with her, we'll put her uh, phone number on the hotline for you. There is a new movie that's coming out. I'd love to tell you all about it, but I can't. I'll explain why. Ooh. This sore neck girl is ruining my life changing my whole personality. I'll tell you about the movie right after this. <laughs>